into a man's face. And when he opened up, he beamed a smile and he goes, he just said this to us. It's just gone. I know it's gone. Now I know that young man's life. And he was a Christian. But something had got him. Something had got him. And I just believe that this is a ministry that every Christian could come into. And it doesn't always, nobody else in this whole auditorium that moment would have known anything about what was going on. And I think, uh, I think Bill Johnson's got a great phrase. He calls it Velcro demons. As quickly as they stick on, you can pull them off. You know, and get rid of some things as well. You know, it's not always put in possession. Sometimes things kind of oppress you as well. Let me just give you one thing for helping you kind of get the enemy out of your life and to keep you out, because I realise time is totally gone. But the devil's tactics are like a hostile takeover. He, he shouldn't be there, he doesn't own you, but he wants to come in and move in on your territory, on your life. And the Bible says that we can demolish strongholds because of the power of God and the truth of God and the weapons that God gives us to pull down strongholds. Paul talks about these strongholds being patterns of thinking, being arguments or pretensions that get set up into our lives. One of the things I'm interested about is people think that when you become a Christian all your problems go away. They kind of don't do they? Sometimes they get harder and they got worse. Wasn't it interesting in Mark that when Jesus started his ministry straight away it was challenged to him. Sometimes when you step out and do things for God there's going to be a challenge straight away. And God you know, wants to help us kind of overcome those challenges. But we can pull down strongholds, demonic pressure and influence thoughts and ideas that maybe govern us as individuals, govern us as a church, govern us as a city or a nation or a community. But here's one of the ways that we can, we can kind of start to help pull down those strongholds in ourselves. The devil's made an inroad into our lives and we have a road of thought. Here's your road, here's your A road that you're driving down. Your first, you feel bad about yourself, who you are. Something has triggered that, something has happened in your past and you feel bad about yourself. Then somebody deliberately shuns you, blanks you, ignores you, doesn't include you, treats you badly, says something about you. You start to think, they don't like me, just like other situations I've experienced. So that means nobody else likes me either. Then you start to go, but my, I don't want to live my life. My life is not what I want. I want to be like somebody else. Or I don't even want to live this at all. I hate being me. And you come to a destination. Then you can have a B road. Your B road is, I just feel that no one cares about me. I'm doing so much for everybody else. Nobody ever does anything for me. Start to think, nobody cares about me. So I feel better when I'm on the internet. I feel better escaping. Maybe it's just because I don't have to be the real me. Or maybe it's because I'm looking at images that I shouldn't look at. But either way, it kind of gives me a release that makes me forget who I am and I can be something totally different. But then you feel a bit guilty. But because of the situation, despite the guilt, you just kind of feel you're in a cycle and you need to just do it again. And you can't stop. And that's your destination. Here's an inroad. Here's a driving lane that Jesus can help bring you into deliverance. What happened in your life is real and it hurt. Whatever is the thinking that has been brought to you for whatever reason is real and it hurts. It doesn't feel good. But as Simone says, well, Jesus loves me. Jesus died for me. 
or I have a father that loves me, a father that made me to be who I am. And suddenly you start to change the way that you think. And you say to yourself, what he thinks of me is so much more important than how I feel. He made me just as I am. And he said that all he made was good. My future is in his hands. And he promises that I have a hope. And I have a future. And suddenly you arrive at a different destination. Now the trouble is, often we start driving down one road and it's hard to get yourself onto another road. However, there becomes a moment when you can stop and start to think, I'm not going to go down this road anymore. I'm going to back up and go down the road that God has kind of helped for us. Imagine a country lane. There used to be a country lane when we moved into the Lake District when I was about 13 for a few years. Um, we lived in a village outside Penrith. And, uh, there was a country lane and there used to be a... a and me and my brother would go up there on our bikes and stuff like that and there was some kind of tyre tracks that were, were kind of forged by maybe just a, a car that had been going up and down but then a kind of a Range Rover kind of used to drive up and down this kind of country lane and when it was wet it made bigger turrets and bigger kind of tracks and then all the cars would try and go out but they would all be going poop, 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 you know, because be, they were their wheels were too small, and you know, trying to get into the same kind of tracks was dead hard. Sometimes you have to keep driving up and down the same road to kind of bring out new tracks. You know, in my life, I just felt I was driving up and down, making tracks in my life. And when I became a Christian, I was a prodigal. I was a Christian at seven years old. I was a periodical. I kind of went in and out, in and out, in and out, in and out. I don't think I, you know, I ever really, I did lots of things wrong, I thought I wasn't really a bad person, but that's kind of a dangerous ground, isn't it, when you think you're not a bad person. Um, but I was kind of like, yeah, I'll live it when I want to live it, and I won't live it when I don't want to live it, or it depends who I'm hanging around with, that's if I'll live it or not. And so it took me so many years to get out of that. And then I had to make a decision about 22 years old, 23 years old, and I just decided, you know what, I'm really going to live this all or nothing. I'm going to give this 100% and really go for it. But for a couple of years, I had to drive new tracks up on life. Because it was so easy just to revert back to how it used to be. And you have to wrestle like Jacob does until it comes properly. That could be good deliverance. Maybe you just need to get a new road. Or in the words of Ty Tribbett, you've got some things, I think you owe me, I've come to get back everything that you stole, I want it all back. Let's pray together. I kind of want to take the mystery out of deliverance a little bit.